Hey everyone, Dan here, and I'm super excited to bring you a new tips and tricks from Voxel 51 with finding and correcting mistakes with 51. We're going to get started here and go through a couple examples of how you can find these mistakes within your data set and fix them right away to ensure that you have the highest quality data sets being used for your applications. To start, we're going to assume that you already have your 51 environment set up, and so we'll get right into it after that. First, we're going to do finding and removing duplicates. Uh, this can be a problem in some data sets. Um, if you're familiar with the CIFAR 10 data set, this does come up occasionally. Um, it's one that plenty of people have seen before, but if not, I'm happy to walk through your first time. It's a very small sized image data set of different labels such as cat, ship, airplane, frogs, you even have a dog down here. Um, and what we'll find very soon is that there's some mistakes within this data set. However, this data set has 10,000 samples. Now I could manually scroll through each one to see if I've seen it before, but that sounds kind of ridiculous, right? So what we can do is we can leverage the 51 brain and use the compute uniqueness function to find the most unique pictures within our data set. What this also allows us to do is sort by least unique first. So we can do a sort by uniqueness here to create a new view, the dupes view for duplicates, and we can see just that view within our UI. So let's check that first. So quick recap, compute uniqueness, and now we're going to sort by uniqueness, a new field that's been created. So now here we can see our uh, CIFAR 10. Let me just load this in real quick. So for our CIFAR 10, we now see all these extra ones here. Let me some double cars, some double airplanes. You know, this car comes up a couple times, right? Um, so now we've identified these duplicates within our data set, what are we going to do next? Well, what we can do is we can select the duplicates. We only need to select one if we've already seen it before. And I've seen this car twice, so I'll select this one. And here he is again. And here's this car again. And all right, that's good enough. You know, I'll get this car here. Once I'm satisfied selecting enough of the duplicates um, from my data set, what I can do. So I can run this code here where I can select these samples that have been selected within my data set. Here I'm going to do call them the dupes ID and we can mark them as duplicates. We're going to tag each one of these samples as dupes. So let's do this real quick and then we can show only our dupes that we've selected. All right? And these look like the guys that we've all tagged, right? So now that we've had these dupes selected, we know that these are already within our data set. Uh, we now have the disjoint set we want to get the dupes false so make sure they're all out and we can create a new clean view of our data here and now we can see we have less duplicates than we saw before so this is still sorting by uniqueness now I don't see as many cars and things like this right and we can repeat this process until we're satisfied with our data um, you can see some of the cars are still coming up again and we can go through and select these until we've come to a final point right we only knocked out seven samples but instead of looking through 10,000, you can look through the least unique first and really speed up that process. Once you're satisfied that your data has been completely cleaned, you can export it to a new directory. Here's a nice uh, image classification directory tree export um, boilerplate code. You know, you fill in with your paths and things like that. But once you're uh, satisfied, you can export that clean view that you created for now a clean data set. You no longer have to work within views for your CIFAR 10. You can now create a new data set, maybe CIFAR clean, something like that, and use that the next time you go to load in or send it to your buddies, whatever you want to do with this uh, now that you can export it. The next thing I would like to go over is finding over classification mistakes. So very similar to um, finding duplicates, sometimes our labels are just labeled incorrectly. You know, it's a dog, but it's labeled cat or something along those lines. Um, so what we'll do is we have a pre-trained model here from PyTorch that's made to inference on CIFAR 10. Um, I already have this model downloaded, but it's included in the notebook if you are interested in following along. So once you have this model downloaded, we're going to go through a couple things. I'm going to go really quickly through this part. I'll just give you the highlights. What we're going to do is we're going to load this model in. Here we can see it's loading CIFAR 10. No more the clean one, but the old one. We're loading it back in. What we're going to do is we're going to corrupt 10% of these labels, right? Uh, CIFAR 10 may have duplicates, but they are labeled correctly at least. 
So what we need to do is uh, go in and corrupt our data for the example. So 10% of our labels will be incorrect. It'll be a random other label instead. And we'll make sure that we know which ones are incorrect by tagging them as a mistake. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to load in this data. We'll predict on our data. And we'll have um, predictions for each one of our set that we're going to do. So we're going to do 1,000 out of the 10,000. And we're going to predict on each one. And after we predict, we're going to add our 51 classification with what we think it should be and save that sample. I know that's a lot to go through. Feel free to pause at this video if you want to look over the code more closely. But I will just be running it here. So we'll see very quickly that our data set's going to be loaded in. We are then going to predict on that data. And then we're going to add to the samples. After that's done, we can now count and look how many of the, our samples that we predicted on are corrupted. So we can see that 366 of these have mistakes. It's pretty high. So now, before we did compute uniqueness with our 51 brain, a new function we can do is called compute mistakenness. And now with compute mistakenness, we can find based on what the labels are and what our predictions were, how wrong we think or how confident that we are that there might be a mistake there is a good way to phrase it. I will link in the description to this video all the documentation for where you can find these functions or tutorials on how to follow things like finding duplicates or finding classification mistakes. So after our mistakeness comp computation is complete, we'll hop into our mistake view here. And we'll load this in and we can see a couple mistakes here. And right away we can find some, right? This dog frog, this is a truck frog, I like that one, the dog horse, come on, or the cat airplane. All right, so obviously something has happened here that's incorrect. Um, there's a couple of actions we can take to here, right? Um, what we can also do is we can click on mistake in this here, and we can see how confident that we are that there's most likely been a mistake here, right? I'm fairly confident that this is in fact a ship and not a deer, or this is in fact a frog and not a truck. And so our dark blue here is our ResNet 50 predicted results, and the light blue here is the ground truth, right? How our labels were loaded in. So now that we've done this, what can we do about this? Well, we can send this back to annotation, right? Tag all these mistakes, send them back just as we did before. We can make a different view like we did before of taking all of our mistakes and taking the, the disjoint, so everything but the mistakes that we have found. Or maybe um, we can just remove any mistakes that we find, uh, right? And we can go through, we can click, I can go down and see that there is metadata here of things like where the file path is. If I scroll down, yep, here's the file path. And I can go in and based on these file paths, remove the data samples as I please. Next we'll be doing is finding and correcting detection mistakes in our data set. I apologize for the jump, but we have loaded in here our Coco 2017 data set. Very famous data set, but like most data sets, does have a few mistakes within it. What we'll be looking for specifically is overlapping boxes, specifically of ones of the same class. These are probably added as a mistake, as in surely probably only in one, or maybe one box is incorrect. What we can use to do that to start is our max IOU, and I really like this function. What this function will do is detect all the max IOUs within your data set to find overlapping boxes. By doing this, we can then create a view here where the max IOU is over a certain threshold that we can set, let's say 0.75. And we can see that within our data set, there's seven of these. After we've run this, we are going to view these seven. And we can see them here. And we get a couple interesting cases here. We can look at them one by one. Here, we have two boys playing baseball. Who we can see that their boxes are correct. However, do overlap a lot. And that's okay. We also have a similar situation here. But as we can take in this one, there's some issues here. There's two boxes here when there should probably only be one, and this one right here is most likely incorrect based on uh, my judgment. So what we can do is we can actually select on this ground truth label as we've seen here, and we can tag it. We can tag it as uh, dupes, let's say. Right? And we'll add and apply this, and we can see now that when we click on this, it has the tag dupes. 
All right, and now that I've tagged this mistake, I can go to my next block of code and I can delete my labels that have whatever tag I decide. We can say dupes. So let's delete that. Make sure that it's out of our data set. We go back in. And we can see that when we load it back in, our man has now lost his incorrect box. And just like that, you've cleaned your data set of a mistake instantly. It only takes a couple of matters, functions and sections to clean it up. Another way you can do this is by using our find the duplicates function. It will basically accelerate what we did before and we can see that it has the same six duplicates here. Um, we can clean up any mis anything from before and then what we can do is using our find duplicates we can select each one of these samples and labels. We can uh, view these you'll see the same six that we saw before right we have this uh, guy here has maybe too many bounding boxes around him um, just as likely as these books uh, are starting to go a little crazy over here there's a lot of books here maybe shouldn't be involved in our data set it might trick our model now that we have this view set up we have it labeled and tagged what we can do is use CVAT to annotate we can just pass over this view here of the dupes view and annotate by running our 51 and CVAT integration. You can just call this function. It will open CVAT for you and I'll include a link in the description on how you can do that. Once these annotations are done in CVAT, all you need to do is load annotations with the annotation key and your new annotations will be added into your data set. Right? There's multiple different ways you can fix the mistakes, but most importantly, 51 offers powerful tools such as compute uniqueness, find duplicates, uh, find overlapping bounding boxes with very powerful functions from the 51 brain as well as other computer vision methods. If you enjoyed this video or any of these tips and tricks, I highly suggest that you guys join us on Slack to further the conversation. I'll include that as well in the links below. Uh, join on Slack, drop a star on GitHub, and keep an eye out for more tips and tricks videos to come. It's been a pleasure showing this, and I look forward to the next time. Bye, everyone.